Hi, I'm Mark Bovet, and if you want to learn how to tie flies like this, 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 and this, you better stay tuned and watch this video. Welcome to Idle Life. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in. We are going to be talking today about different flies for uh, trophy trout, for fishing for trophy trout. So today we're going to start with a standard fly. We've got a video that you're going to see right now. This is a frisky jenny fly this is a really popular fly in our area they work very good i'm going to show you everything you need to get to be able to tie <clears throat> this fly this style of fly i'm going to kind of go over some of the equipment we use so first you want to get yourself a good vice there's several different vices out there this is a regal um griffin makes a good vice as well you don't have to go all out on a vise right off the bat, especially if you're just starting. Just get yourself something good. Cabela's, I think, has a good kit. It's $20. You can get it. It comes with a vise. It comes with your bobbin. Scissors. A whip finish tool. <clears throat> These are really important tools in order to tie this particular fly here and all the flies that we're going to be showing you. Um, so if you're just getting into it and you kind of want to feel it, you don't have to go out and spend 150, 200, 300 dollars on a vice. You can just start with the, you know, a basic kit like the ones they have at Cabela's or uh, I think even North 40, you can get them on Amazon. Uh, you can get into a decent setup just to start. 
So anyways, now we'll talk about hooks. Hooks are kind of important. I personally like owners and gamagatsus. Everybody has their preference, but they're good hooks. These are the B10S Stinger hooks. I've got them in one aught and two aught. You can see there. Um, I really like this for the main hook on the fly. You can see. And then for the trailer hook, like this one here, I like the owner one aughts. They just seem to do really good. Now how we connected, you can see on the video, uh, we connect the main body hook to the trailer hook. We use a 40 pound. You can get yourself a spool of this at Black Sheep, any sporting goods store in your area, even online. You can order it on Amazon, it's a big game. I think what, they're eight bucks for a roll of this, eight or nine bucks, you can get a roll of that. It'll last you a long time, <laughs> a long, long time. Um, threads. Personally, I like 210 Ultra Thread. You can see there. Um, this color here, you can use it to tie in your trailer hook, your body. This is the body material here. This comes in, this is Mylar tubing. It just comes in a big, well, it comes in a roll about like that in the package. You can buy it at your fly tying stores. You can order it online. This is one way to do it. Another way to do it is with Flashaboo. Like the flies you saw in that video, we just used Flashaboo. Cut a couple strands off, wrap it, and then you can uh, glue over it. This is just cheap nail polish from Walmart. It's just clear coat nail polish. Uh, you can just coat over it. Let it dry for an hour or so. You can sit there, you can tie your bodies up, and then uh, coat them with this. And uh, I'd just recommend letting it dry for at least an hour. On the tubing, you can glue it. You can glue over the top after you put it on your body, or you can just tie it on your body and just glue this tag in here. And uh, that'll kind of hold it down. The more fish you catch on it, the more this is going to tear up. So, I mean, the bodies won't last as long. I I do it several ways. I normally don't glue that style body when I do these bot, you know, this type of body on a fly. Plus, I like to be able to see my beat up flies, the ones that are working really good for me. So it's kind of a good hit. You'll tie five or six of these flies and you'll have one or two good ones and you'll know them when you, you know, when you look in your box, you, it's hard to forget a good fly. So anyways, that's kind of the basic stuff that you need to get, at least get started. Um, bucktails, we can talk about these a little bit. This is what we're tying with. You can get these at the store or you can get them off of a, a deer like the one you see right here a good rainbow trout fly and we're gonna go crush them you can do it that way too so <laughs> you can dye them you can dye them yourselves you can or you can just go to Warvis or online or to your local sporting goods store that sells fly materials and buy yourself a bucktail that's already dyed and done. There's got tons of different colors. Um, this one here is $7.95. They're not that expensive. And I think you could probably get at least two dozen flies off of one bucktail. I've never counted how many flies I've gotten off of one, but I know they'll do quite a few flies. So anyways, uh, so with that being said, we're gonna hop into another style of fly that we use. All right guys, so we're back. We just got done tying the weedless fly. We just tied this one for you guys. So I like to use a four aught Gamagatsu hook. Um, these ones are really good, but 
you'll get fish if you get fish in the 20 pound range with these they tend to bend these hooks out so i like to use the heavies they have gamagatsu makes the same hook but right up here where it says ewg it'll say heavy so if you're thinking about getting into the trying to tie some of these weedless flies up I definitely recommend just tie them on the heavy. You can do these and they will work. You'll do really good with the teeners and stuff. You can, you'll be able to land your 20s, but after that, the hook kind of starts going south. So um, again, the bobbin, the scissors, the vise, all we need is, after that is uh, the same top coat. Like, I think this stuff's at Walmart. It's like $1.97 for a little bottle of that. It's real cheap, and it works really good. I got flies that are 10, 12 years old that are still holding hair really well. So, um, it's just what I do. You can use whatever you want. They've got all kinds of different hardeners and stuff for your heads. And it's just something I like to use. But anyways, so the times we use this fly. You can use this all year round. Don't think that there's... A certain time of year that you have to use this you can use this behind a flasher if you want down deep you can run it long line behind the boat it does help with the weeds um, you will tend to get some weeds stuck here and I've tried you know gluing all the way up or tying or you know trying to make some kind of void there I've, we've done a piece of mono through the eye and then back down onto the shank and tied it on. Uh, you can mess around however you want with it, but that's you know that's something to think about. I guess it's not completely weedless. My favorite part about this fly is when you have those thirty to forty mile an hour winds on pond array. Um, we'll get into a little bit about tracking. I got mine side in. And uh, Steven's getting his side in. He's flies, he got it too, daddy daycare. Right? Yeah, he was daddy daycare. So this fly's caught a bunch of fish. This is a treble hook fly though. They are really hard to tune. You want that jig or that fly, just it runs straight no matter what, and it gets bit and it'll get one. But you gotta tune it. You have to mess with it. That's tied by a guy out here. His name's Kenny Breed. He catches a lot of fish. That's a sweet fly. Yeah, it's not Put it terrible. out. You want your flies to ride straight up and down when you're using them in a planer board application. Um, these flies here, these are the tried and true. They've been around for a long time. I've got tons of these. I love these flies. Uh, and I'll never stop running this style fly. But when you get into that 30 to 40 mile an hour wind, um, you really don't want to spend a lot of time on the back of the boat with the fly over the side trying to tune it. It's really tough. It can be daunting, difficult. This fly here has a keel. If you can see that right there, the hook bend in this acts like a keel. So there's very little tuning that you have to do to this fly. It works very well in heavy winds. Um, so it's something to try out. The hook point's always up. Um, that's what the trailer hooks on these are for. These fish, you know, when we're using these on planer boards, they're coming up from 30, 40, 50 feet, and they're smashing these and then diving straight back down. And that's why we like to have these trailer hooks on here, on these style flies, because the fish grabs the fly. If you can imagine it. It's coming up, grabbing it, and then it turns and goes down. Well, this hook point leaves the mouth, and it hooks the trailer. If you can see that right there. So this one, basically, is just a big trailer hook. So when the fish comes up, grabs it, and comes back down, boom. See that? It's got it's stuck in my hand there. So it's just food for thought. Um, there's lots of different ways to tie flies. There's not one good way to tie it. You don't have to tie it. You know, you can, you can make your own patterns up. It's something fun to mess with. So anyways, with that said... I showed you these two flies. Now we're going to get on to two flies and articulated flies. 
Uh, Mark's going to show you guys about that. My portion of this video is about articulated flies, which means, you know, a fly that's tied on a shank, but I have a loop connection to my hook. You can tie multiple articulations in a fly. This is a, a standard articulated steelhead fly. I use this fly in like BC, but this pattern actually works really well trolling on Lake Ponderé or patterns very similar. I'm gonna tie an articulated fly using something called a dubbing brush. This is a dubbing brush I made. You could actually buy these, you know, Arico Puglisi makes a bunch of different sparkle dubs but this is basically just arctic fox and synthetic that's spun up i'll do another video on dubbing brushes but there's a lot on youtube about it just another method um and then there's tube flies um this is a tube fly that i fished pretty heavily for a few days in bc some years ago um you know these flies they troll really well, you know, on Lake Ponderé, you know, if you're watching our stuff because of our Lake Ponderé stuff, but we also get out, you know, I spent most of my life chasing steelhead everywhere from Alaska down to California. So I've been lucky enough to fish steelhead all over the place and really what our fish are, are steelhead. So this is a tube fly needle. This is how you actually mount your fly. If I could find the hole um onto the vise so there's my tube that mounts this is a tapered piece you go till your tube fits that's on there good this clamps into your vise so this is how you tie a tube flies is you use a tubing needle so as opposed to the hook. So that's how you would tie with a tube fly. So the first fly I'm gonna tie is an articulated fly. Um, this fly will catch trout all over the country, steelhead in various colors. They'll eat these. This is more trouty colors. Um, and uh, we'll get started on that. So you saw, this is like a really quick tie, but it's a very good looking pattern. Um, you know, Arctic Fox body, it's pretty translucent. You know, this is good natural olive colors. You know, this thing will catch any trout anywhere really. Um, the only thing that I need to do is just touch up on the front here, um, cause that's unraveling already. My whip finish wasn't perfect, but I'll clean that up real quick. I'll give it a little dab of glue. This stuff's the trick for durable flies. That needs to be cleaned up, but super simple pattern. That's a very fishy looking fly. That's gonna have just a ton of motion in the water. That's all you need. I mean, you know, swing this bug with like 10 foot of T14, something like that. I've got tungsten eyes on it. It's gonna sink real well you know mix up the colors you know if you're on steelhead rivers fish you know a little more uh you know bright obnoxious colors but that's really it so i'm going to get on to a pattern of flies uh called a temple dog um it's like a uh my rendition it's like a guide type pattern you know um super easy to tie i'm going to use dubbing brushes with it uh, and maybe a little bucktail in it and we'll tie up a little tube fly I'm going to tie a fly called the Temple Dog. Temple Dogs were originated um, on the Gala River, I believe. It's a river in Norway for big Atlantic salmon. They have some of the biggest ones in the world. This is like the LPO version. So most of our bait fish, black and white kokanee. So I've got this really awesome translucent body material. So it's basically going to be the flip side. This is my body. 
it's going to be this and I'm going to have two wings and they're going to be out of bucktail. So, um, you know, this was the last pattern we tied and now we're going to tie a tube fly. So check this out. Design on this fly, you won't see it now, but when it's wet, this thing's gonna be the shape of a flame or like a teardrop, which is like the perfect profile for the bait fish that we're looking to imitate. Um, you've got junction tubing, so this is the junction tube that we're gonna shove up onto this style tube right here. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this thing off and I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna burn it back right to here, but I'm gonna let my uh, nail polish cure. So this is just basic kokanee pattern. It's got the translucence that we're looking for. Got the perfect teardrop profile. You know, this fly also. The other thing, you know, when I'm designing a fly, I want a teardrop profile and that's what I've got, like a little miniature flame. Polish, I'm gonna you know, pop some eyes on it, you know, make it a little more realistic. One thing that you guys probably saw me doing is brushing. This is just like a little brush that I use on my dogs, but um, any wire brush will work really well. When you're working with these dubbing brushes, they're really quick to make flies. That's what I like about dubbing brush stuff is it's really quick. You can crank out flies super fast. But the only way they look good is if you brush them out. So that's why they're called dubbing brushes. The method is you actually brush out the hair. So um, that's that. So, you know, that's a North Idaho style articulated pattern. And here is a North Idaho style um, tube fly that would catch fish. I mean, if you took this bug down to Baja and was put this in front of a rooster fish you'd probably get bit like this is a very good pattern you know um imitates a wide range of bait fish so perfect profile you know any bait fish in that size that'll work you're gonna see some fishing videos with these you know you'll see some fish with that hanging out of its mouth that that beautiful little this one <laughs> the weedless like as sparse and as simple as that pattern is, that is deadly effective. And the thing is, you can't do this this way. This design is just a sparse, deadly effective. Some of my best flies on Lake Ponderay are so chewed up, they have way less hair than that. It's like, you know, you've just got like a couple pieces of tinsel, you know, and it still gets a bit like this fly, ancient fly. It's all beat up, but that thing's caught so many fish. Like, you put that thing out, it's going to get bit tomorrow. So, yeah. All right. That's what I know. If you made it this far, you liked what we're doing, uh, learning about the various fly patterns that are big up here in North Idaho. If you like these videos and want to support us, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down here like this video and leave us a comment what kind of flies you want to see us tie um you want to see this like a weekly thing where steven and i get on the vice um personally i've tied everything from like saltwater bugs to the trout bugs i know steven is a very good technical tire when it comes to dry flies and nymphs you know if you guys want to see like flies for the spokane river or the Coraline river stuff like that we're more than happy to sit down we got tons of materials that we own you know we have no sponsors you know, we're just showing you what we use. I mean, we spent our own hard-earned money on this stuff. So, uh, you know, we're going to go through and, you know, we might even get to the point where we uh, tie some really funky Atlantic salmon patterns. Um, you know, we'll probably go out back. You know, i got a bunch of uh, birds out back. Show you guys the farm and uh, might tie a bug from uh, one of the birds we got out back.